Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to see what happens when you turn on an LT enabled UE. What happens when you power on a mobile which is an LT device. So basically a cell search procedure and LT initial access. Yes, the mid series guy is back. Those who know my original series. This is a new version with LTE made simple series. LTE initial access. So before the UE goes and actually attaches onto the network, it has to first go through four different processes, namely being cell search, decode system information, random access and RRC setup. After going through all these four processes, it's only after that the LTE, it, you, it attaches on the LTE network. So UE has to first go through all these four processes. This video, we will only focus on the first two parts, which is cell search and decoding system info for the initial access. For every different process and procedures, we have a separate video. For cell search and decoding sensor in system information, what are different things it has to do? Synchronization, which is nothing but your time synchronization, slot synchronization, frame synchronization. Reading your system information, which is your MIB, which is your master information block, which it gets from physical broadcast channel. Then your SIP1, which is system information block 1, which it gets from PDSCH, which is physical downlink shared channel. Then it has to do the PLM and search and PLM and match. After that, the S criterion. And then it's basically ready for the random access. What are the ingredients it needs actually to do all these processes? It needs SSS, which is secondary synchronization signal, PSS, which is primary synchronization signal. From both of it, it derives and computes PCI, which is your physical cell ID. And then after that, it reads the MIP and SIP from the two different channels, as we seen in the earlier slide. After reading the SIP one, it actually calculates or does the PLM and selection of PLM and matching and calculates the S criterion, whether the suit cell is suitable and strong enough to camp on. In LTE, there are two types of downlink transmissions on physical channel, which on physical transmission. One is physical signals, other is physical channels. The signals are basically PSS, SSS and DRS. There are a lot of physical channels. We won't go into all the channels. For this particular procedure, we are interested in only two channels, which is PDSCH and PVCH. We have a separate video on radio frames and physical channels. If you are interested to know about it, you can look out there. So what is PSS? What is SSS? We will see. So to synchronize, before synchronization, let's before going there, before synchronization, what it does. Let's say the red one is Verizon, the pink one is T-Mobile, the yellow one is Sprint, and blue is AT&T. As soon as you turn on the UE, it starts scanning all the RF channels. And UE usually supports, today's date, most of the UE supports all the bands. So it will scan all the band support transmitted by those networks, all the ERFCN. And What's the minimum criteria of scanning all the RF channel from different networks is the downlink reference signal should be greater than minus 110 dBm. It should be stronger than minus 110 dBm as per 36.304 or 204, which is UE procedures in the idle mode. Once it scans all those channels, stronger ones, then it will select the strongest amongst the strongest cells amongst the network and then it will synchronize, it will read the PSS, SSS. After that, it will go and read the MIP and SIP. From SIP, it will find out the PLM and it will match the PLM and then it will decide, oh, this network belongs to me and this is a suitable cell. Even after finding the suitable cell, it has to do the S criterion, which is like whether the cell is stronger and campable enough. So we will see into details, but the ideal procedure is scan all the networks, LT networks, see all of them. Then based on the PLM and match, select the best network and then find the strongest among the network. Let's say two, two node B's of T-Mobile are transmitting, but who is the stronger will be chosen. So we will see the criteria. 
but this is the connected dots like scan all the RF channels based on the minimum criteria of minus 110 dBm and higher synchronize read PSS SSS downlink reference signal read the physical channels system information uh, master information from system information do the PLM and match and then do the S criterion this is the complete end-to-end -end cell camping only not the complete attach for that after that it has to go for random access and LTE attach so now after scanning all the RF signals it has to read the PSS and SSS the primary synchronization and secondary synchronization signal they are transmitted in the radio frame uh, again not to go into detail of what is radio frame we have a different video for it the radio frames uh, they are every radio frame is divided into 10 subframes of 1 millisecond each so the total radio frame is 10 millisecond each subframe which is SF is divided into two slots of 0.5 millisecond each here the PSS and SSS are transmitted in subframe 1 and subframe 6 for FDD there are two technologies FDD and TDD uh, in slot 1 and slot 11 in slot 1 the last symbol is your PSS and one symbol preceding to PSS is your SSS so and it is repeated every 5 milliseconds so slot 1 is as the first in the sub first subframe each subframe is 1 millisecond so after 5 milliseconds again this is repeated so the repetition rate is 5 milliseconds now if you see in TDD the positioning of PSS and SSS is slightly different here it's transmitted in slot 2 and slot 11 of subframe 1 and 6 and also the gap between the PSS and SSS is two symbols so when UE reads the difference of the position in PSS and SSS it comes to know what technology is being used FDD or TDD so that way it determines whether it's on FDD or TDD and also every slot has certain number of symbols like the normal cyclic prefix has seven symbols and extended cyclic prefix as six symbols so when UE reads the number of symbols as well it comes to know what cyclic prefix it is going to lack so now you have the PSS and SSS now how PSS and SSS help us to determine the PCI we will see here PSS and SSS are nothing but pseudo random sequences whereas your PSS is SSS is your cell group ID number which is between 0 to 167 Whereas SSS, there are three unique cell IDs or cell numbers, which is your PSS. So from this, we will derive the physical cell ID, which is like the formula is 3 into the cell group number plus the cell number. And total number of PCI in LTE are 504. There are 504 unique PCIs. So every e node B has three antennas or more each antenna like alpha beta gamma has its own unique pci or physical cell id so when you we when we say it's camp on to the node b it's camp on to the particular cell with a particular cell id physical cell id how it is computed we will see so in a way you know the sss is seen as the last name like for example zuckerberg so there are like so many zuckerbergs but the unique name is Mark, so Mark Zuckerberg. So, for example, you share the same last name with your brother, sister, or your parents, but your own name is your unique to you. So, it's like first name dot last name. So, 0 to 167 is your last name, the group number, and cell number is your three, any one of the three unique cell IDs, 0, 1, 2. As I said, it's total 504 unique PCI values, so 0. So 167 into 3 is 501 plus 3 is total 504. So every cell has a unique ID between 0 to 504. Now after synchronization, after synchronization, it is now it has PSS and SSS. It is slot synchronized and time synchronized. Now we have to see the frame synchronization. How does it become get the frame number? So after reading the PSS and SSS, your signaling is over. It goes and reads the physical channel, which is physical broadcast channel. From there, it gets the master information block. In the master information block, you get the system bandwidth. As you know, LTE is 
able to transmit on different bandwidths 1.4, 5, 10, 20. So UE comes to know what bandwidth it is transmitting. It gets the system frame number. So it also does the frame synchronization along with PSS and SSS and MIP. It does the slot synchronization, frame synchronization, frame synchronization. It MIP also carries a lot of other information such as pH information and other information which will help you to decode further uh, channels which is SIP1, SIP2, etc. So now after getting the MIP, it goes and reads PDSCH which is your physical downlink shared channel from which it reads the SIP1 which is system information block 1. Now the most important information carried in SIP1 is your PLMN. What is PLMN is your MCC and MNC, the mobile country code and mobile network code. Each network has its own unique mobile network code. So what it does is, as again going through the summary, first the cell search scan, all the RF channels read everybody, ATT, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, then synchronize, read the SSS, PSS, then read the MIP and then read the SIP. In the SIP you will come to know whether this PLMN matches to the PLMN of the SIM. SIM already, you SIM already has a PLMN written on it. It will read the SIM, SIP and see whether it's a suitable cell or it's a confirmed cell or the same match of PLMN. It will go and camp on to the network. After it successfully satisfies the S criterion. What is S criterion? So S criterion is basically S R receive level. Basically S receive level should be greater than zero and S call should be greater than zero. There is a formula like S receive level is equals to Q receive level measured minus Q receive level mean minus P compensation. I would say not to get bothered or worried about the formula. All these parameters are transmitted in SIB1 except one parameter which is Q receive level measured which is nothing but the UE measures, okay? And that is the first one subtracted by all the other parameters. So you put there the received reference signal, received power of the cell reference signal, and then you put all the other parameters which are written in the SIP1. Everything is transmitted in SIP1. You just make sure that the cell RX level is greater than zero and S qual is greater than zero. The only thing the only parameter here which is not transmitted in SIP1 is RSRP which is measured by UE. So by putting that in this formula and computing it will see okay the SRX receive level is basically greater than zero, S qual is greater than zero, this cell is strong enough I can camp on. So basically it will go and camp on to the network. Here the cell has only camped on, here the UE has only camped on on the cell not yet attached. And even before going to the attach, it has to first do the random access, RRC connection setup and the LP attach. And all of them are again a detailed procedure, similar way of cell search. So we will focus on all these procedures in different videos. For now, we know how the UE basically searches the cell, finds the suitable cell, makes sure it's a strong cell and camps on the cell. Thank you for watching this video. These are the references and if you like this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share and comment. Sharing is caring. Thank you. The Made Simple series is back.